my beautiful friends. I'm your host, Leah Rowling. And I'm Carrie Kenzie. Welcome to Shift Happens. Discover the leader within. This podcast is designed to disrupt the way you live, lead, and love. At Shift, we challenge traditional narratives and believe that inner wisdom is the key to every decision. Are you ready to explore a new paradigm of both living and leading? We'll dive deep into our innate strengths as women, compassion, curiosity, intuition, grace, vulnerability, and love. The shift, it's about to get real. Rediscover the power within and transform your life. Stay tuned. It all starts now. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome. Welcome to Shift Happens with your hosts, me, Lee Rowling, and the beautiful Carrie Kenzie. This, this truly is a podcast where we don't just talk about business. We talk about the power of leadership to change the game. Today's episode couldn't be more timely or what I believe more crucial, right? We're living in an era of like unprecedented challenges, rising inflation, um, deepening uh, the social divides and uh, persuasive and, and pervasive uncertainty, right? It is a moment um, in history that demands something extraordinary in each of us. So here's the question that we need to ask, our, ask ourselves, and we're going to be diving into this question today, and that is, are you ready to step up? Are you ready to step up? Because right now, leadership just isn't a skill. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity, right? It's the anchor that keeps us grounded and truly, truly the compass that guides us um, through all the challenges and the growth. So in this episode, we're going to dive deep into one, why leadership is the ultimate game changer in crisis, and two, how leaders who rise in these moments are the ones that will shape our future. So the phases that we're gonna be talking through are phases of resistance, phases of reliance, and phases of resilience. And these, these are phases that history has showed us time in and time again, not just the key to surviving, but truly thriving in in crisis. So whether you're a business leader, whether you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, or just someone who simply wants to make a meaningful impact, this episode is for you. It's it's a call to action and a reminder that now is the time to get serious about leadership, to, to unify, to grow, and to lead with resilience. So let's dive in. Carrie. Yes, my dear. Thoughts about thoughts about the phases. Thoughts about um, why it's so important that us as leaders step up and really summon the best of who it is that we are, and why is it so required right now? Oh my gosh! Let's say, do we have an hour and a half, three hours, all day to have this conversation? <laughs> Let's see how so, much time we have. Oh my gosh. We, there's so much to unpack just in that conversation. Here's the first thing that I will say is that resilience is something that is terribly confused. Yes. It is terribly confused. Many, many leaders believe that they are leading from this place of resilience. It is the mindset of get up, brush it off, keep moving forward, uh, tackle the next challenge, make sure like you're overcoming it. You're, it's like you're consistently climbing the wall and getting to the other side. And in that, what I have found and what I experienced just even navigating my own journey was that we're not sitting in resilience when we're doing that. We're actually sitting in an energy of resistance. Mm -hmm. And and that has, and typically that will happen when you come on the back end of some kind of adversity, right? Because in that adversity, again, it's let's get up, let's brush it off, let's move on, let's tackle the next thing, let's make sure that we're able to accomplish and to do the things and hit the goals and and be in the place that we desire to be, right? Because who wants to look in the rearview mirror? Well, anytime we step into an adversity, we have a choice to be made. And it is, are we going to step forward in resilience or are we gonna to continue to remain in resistance? And you and I have spoken many times about this because since 2020, 
because of the collective collateral damage that occurred during that time period, we are as a culture sitting in an energy of resistance. Mm -hmm. There is an inability to truly, you will get people who won't even acknowledge, they don't even want to address that that time period happened in our lives. And when we do that, we do sit in this, in this energy of that persistence, that moving, that um, like it is just a full force effort going forward. And that's how leadership's been done. Leah, that's how leadership's been mm -hmm. done. And that's not how leadership is meant to progress forward because it got us to the place where we're currently at. I don't know about you, but I know I sit back and I look at the landscape of what's happening in our country. And I'm like, how, how did we get here? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like what happened that brought us to this choice in yeah. this moment? And this is the thing that we get to address. Yeah. We are being called into a greater version of ourselves. We are being called into a more compassionate, conscious leadership style. We are being called into a place of resilience where there is vulnerability and authenticity at the charge and at the lead of every single leadership style. That is what we are being called to. And whether you have felt it, whether you have heard it, whether you have sensed it within your own organization, within your family, within your community, it's there. It's there. It's either showing up for you in a quiet little whisper, or it's like a two by four that's hitting you on the backside of the head. That's going now, honey, is the time to make the change. Yeah, it's, it's so true. And I think, you know, if, if, if I'm a listener and I'm taking this in, I'm thinking, God, I wonder if I'm in resilience mm -hmm. or I, or am I in resistance? Because they feel this, they, they feel a lot alike. They right? can. They can, right? Mm -hmm. But what I would like to share is, you know, you'll know the difference mm -hmm. if you don't feel like you are in flow. Mm -hmm. When you feel as if you're not in alignment, like you were saying, you're you're constantly like battling and those are the words, right? Right. right? It's such a struggle. You're such I'm a fighting to get there. Fighting. Yes. That's mm -hmm. when you know that you're in resistance. Mm -hmm. It feels like resilience because of the effort that's required. Mm -hmm. But what if, what if we could mitigate that effort to make it flow, to make it easy? Because mm -hmm. that's when you know that you're in resiliency, when you're in alignment with mission, when you're alignment with the best of who it is that you are, and that gets invited to each day, that's mm -hmm. when you know that you're in re resiliency versus resistancy. And it's really important for the leaders, every single one of us of the world that leads teams and families and movements to understand the difference. Because when we're leading in resistance, what it looks like is, is we placate, we please, we, we can't possibly ask our teams for more. They'll quit. They've already endured so much. They can't handle anything anymore. And the reason why we think they can't handle anything more is because we can't mm -hmm. as the leader, we can't wow. handle anything more. And so mm -hmm. we make an assumption that so must be so and true for our team. So must be so and true for our families. And we have to know that it is our responsibility to call them up into the potential that they are for you and for them, right? And so that's when you know that you are in this, um, this resistance phase is when you've kind of, kind of taken a back seat to, to accountability when you've kind of taken a back seat to having expectations that that for sure would have not you would have not have allowed pre covid mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so many people are making accommodations and and they're negotiating their own principles and their own values and 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 their own mission because they feel as though that they can't possibly ask for more and asking for more is required from you and your teams, if you are going to, to differentiate yourself from all the other companies, because you're either getting mm -hmm. into production, you're either elevating your own GDP for mm -hmm. yourself and your family or your organization, or you're not. 
That's mm -hmm. the difference maker. Well, and here's the thing too, like the key, the, there's a very key element that I want to make sure that we're addressing within this, that when we look at that resistance versus resilience, and we talk about the, you know, greater expectation and calling people forward and calling people up, we got to be real careful in that too, because that can also, uh, that can also be in resistance too, right? It's that continuous drive forward without addressing what's happening now. Mm -hmm. It is in that expectation of somebody else or that expectation of yourself that denies the ability to see what's currently happening in this present moment, right? So there's so many uh, different, and just a tiny little example, tiny little example of how this can show up, right? Because it's not going to look anything like you expect it to ever, but it could be, I had a, was having a conversation in mastermind and this gal was very you know, confused and concerned about AI, which many are, right? I don't understand AI. I'm not sure how this is going to be good for my business. I'm not sure. I don't trust it, right? I don't trust it. I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with it. Um, and so I'm just, I'm kind of putting that off to the back burner. I'm going to look at that later, this kind of situation. And the whole time she's talking, I'm going, what else is she not looking at? Mm -hmm. What else is she hiding herself from? Because she doesn't want to address it face on. It's, it's in that, like, we, we don't give ourselves the ability to truly sit in the experience of what's happening right in this moment, because it is that get up, move on, set the next goal, chart the next path, make sure everybody's doing the thing without having a vulnerability or acceptance or grace in this particular moment to be able to sit back and go, what is happening right now? I fell down right? Something, something went off the rails. Why? Why? And how is it that we are experiencing this? And what is it that we need to understand from this? And how is everybody navigating through this? And are we allowing the space for people really to be able to allow their minds to kind of sit in a chaos so that they can find the clarity to find that path forward? Mm -hmm. That's the piece that misses when we are talking from resistance to resilience, because you can push forward and you can have these expectations and you can motivate your teams and you can inspire your teams. And that's amazing. But are you allowing this moment of vulnerability of this question of sitting in the absolute chaos and going, you know what, maybe we need to look at how we navigated that little bit of a time period. Maybe we need to look at how people are showing up today versus how they showed up before that because our expectations have to be different, mm -hmm. right? Our minds have to shift. We have to look at this from a little bit different perspective. And that's the only way we have the ability to be able to flow, to be able to navigate through. Resilience is about, when you think about a tree, a tree cannot stand solidly in resistance without being knocked over. It can't, mm -hmm. growth doesn't happen in resistance. Growth happens in vulnerability from the tiny branches, the wispies, right? The pieces that get to move all over the place and the storm comes in and it's just kind of wavering everywhere. That's resilience. Resistance is when we're standing tall and we're trying not to, you know, it won't take me down type of yeah. thing. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And I love the call forward because mm -hmm. resistance also is resisting a new way a yes. new way to lead, a new way to love, a new way to, to move missions because we think it should be like it was. And when we think it should be like it was, we resist what is and we resist the information that mm -hmm. now reveals about the path forward for the future. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we need to understand mm -hmm. and embrace this new workforce mm -hmm. we need to understand and embrace the new way because our lack of of accepting it and and i like this isn't a conversation of approval i don't i don't care what you approve of right i just need you to accept it because mm -hmm. what you don't accept you will resist and you will recreate more of the very thing that you don't want in in mm -hmm. your business in your life and so where can we accept that this just is, this is, mm. this is the new workforce. This is the new way that, that people are motivated differently, that people mm -hmm. care about things differently than they did before. And, 
and be able to bring our companies and bring our mission in into into that mm -hmm. and i believe that the people that do that the people that do that quick quicker mm -hmm. um and with a sense of urgency mm -hmm. will get the very thing that they want when we resist that and think that they should be different and things that should be like it was before because that's our experience of it right right will continue to keep us stuck in the very place we don't want to be mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i a thousand percent agree and i think it it really is in that you have to in order to find resilience you have to allow yourself to be able to witness the entire experience in anything that you have been through, mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. And so to, to look back at that time period, which nobody wants to address, it's like this thing that happened. Please don't put me back. Please don't make me look at it. Please don't make me navigate any kind of the emotions that maybe kind of that stemmed from it. Right. Because business was really freaking hard and it just go want to go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. Right. It was just so much easier before that. Now I have to navigate people not wanting to come to work. Now I have to navigate. There's like this life balance thing that was never there before and people wanting to be off all the time. And if we're going to find resilience, we have to give ourselves the opportunity to look at the experiences that we have had and to be able to navigate them in a way of curiosity and really look at them and go, what did shift? What did change? What was the most painful part of that? Right? What was what was the thing that kind of came in and snuck up on me like I had no absolute expectation of what it could be, right? And mm -hmm. and how did I navigate that? How did I not navigate that? What is it that's still sticking with me? Why am I still potentially upset about this? Because if we haven't looked back, we will never find the gold that's going to be able to help us pursue forward in a completely new way. And that's what we're being called to do. Mm -hmm. We truly are. Leadership is not, leadership is no longer what leadership was. Mm -hmm. It's just not. We have to, and I told you about this conversation I had at a women's leadership conference and we're sitting at dinner and it was like, how do we awaken the consciousness of this leadership? Yeah. How do we bring people back into this ability of vulnerability for resilience? so that we can truly lead, we can truly lead our teams, we can lead our lives, we can lead our families in a way that brings them into the greatest version of who they are in a space of resilience so that we can, we all have the ability to navigate whatever is thrown our way, whatever's thrown our way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but we it, have to look back to understand that. Yeah. I mean, it, it has to, I mean, if, cause you know how I love all my little frameworks, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> Like if, if, if there was like a three-part framework for this, that mm -hmm. has to be step one. Mm -hmm. Step one has to be an awareness of what was. Always. And, 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 and a curiosity is why do I want it that way? Mm -hmm. Why, why do I want it the way that it was before? Why mm -hmm. do I want people to not have work-life balance? Why do I want them like busting, busting without any balance to climb this, this, this hierarchical ladder of to, to nowhere other mm -hmm. than misery. What, mm -hmm. like, and without judgment, why do I want it that way? Mm -hmm. Why am I resisting a new way? What, what did that way inform me? Right. Is it, is it because it's comfortable because it's mm -hmm. more familiar because there's more certainty that lies there. And if you, if you really get curious to ask yourself all of these, you'll realize that there's no more or less discomfort. There's, there's more or less, probably more uncertainty, right. By using your past to predict your future, like mm -hmm. in, in a new time, in a new way, like that is exactly where we need to go. And so that awareness, that understanding with complete grace and compassion for ourselves as to why it is that we think it should be how it was, mm -hmm. but want something different. Mm -hmm. Curious, right? And then we get to adopt a leadership, a new, what I want to call it, a new leadership mindset, which takes us out of the old leadership of, of dictatorship, of 
um, this, this hierarchy of organizational structure, which will never work. I'm just going to put that out there, will never work. And again, why do we want it? What, what do we make it mean that we're here? That's I know. I know. right. I know. I know. Yes, Miss Carrie, go. Control. I know. Control. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's it. Do you want to know why people are so frustrated in leadership right now? Is because they felt like, so sorry, we felt this way. We felt like we had an element of control prior to 2020. We really did. We felt like we had more control over the schedule. We had more control over the people. We had more control over our lives. We had more control over our every day. We had what we felt like was autonomy of choice. 2020 happens, right? And all of that, no control, everything completely rug ripped out underneath everybody, everybody. So what do you do when that happens? And this is where people move from just going through the every day in kind of a reliance phase, and then they move into a resistant phase. What do we do when the rug gets pulled out from underneath us? We grab for more control. Mm -hmm. We grab for more control. And when we grab for more control, right, then we, then we begin to really diminish everybody around us. We hold on tighter. We become more resistant too. Mm -hmm. And, and it's because of our idea or thought of, I had control prior to what 2020 was trying to show you, honey, is you never did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you get to understand if I get to release control over the experiences around me, over the outcome, right? Then, then how is it that I get to move more beautifully? Yeah. In a space of flow without struggle. Yeah. And I will say that it was, as you mentioned, it, it was this false illusion of control. It was. But there are things that are in your control. And when you double down on the things that aren't, mm -hmm. you completely become out of control. Yes. And then, and then you feel frustrated by the world because you thought you had control where you didn't. And you lost the control of actually where you have it, right? And that's, yes. those elements of control are the very elements that we will continue to bring forward in these conversations. Mm -hmm. They are the conversations that we bring forward in our workshops that we have coming up. If you're not signed up, it's lead without limits. We want people leading without mm -hmm. limits. We want people leading and, and having the resiliency of the control that they have and releasing, right? The yes. resistance on the false control that they thought they've always had that they've never had. Yes. And so we welcome you in that workshop. We welcome you in um, our offerings that we have coming up. We're very excited about all of them. So for all of that, you can find it in the show notes. But more importantly than any of that, we want you to choose every single day to lead, mm -hmm. to know the importance of you as a leader, whether again, you lead yourself, you lead your families, you lead your teams, you lead your movement, it matters. And we need and we want and we invite you to show up in a way that feels easy, that feels aligned. And if you're not there, we can help you. But if you're not there, just know that you're in resistance and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. The awareness of the resistance is the, is the requirement of the show right now. Yeah. If, if it doesn't feel easy, if it doesn't feel aligned, I'm in resistance. And then when you get curious, you'll be able to shift out should you choose. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes. Have an awesome day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. You have been listening to Shift Happens. Discover the leader within with Leah Rowling and Carrie Kensey, where we help you reconnect with your inner leader. Learn to trust your instincts and live with authenticity and confidence. Tune in every Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time to Shift Happens on Transformation Talk Radio for more insights, inspiration, and actionable strategies to live and lead, not only in purpose, but on purpose. It is time to embrace a life and leadership style that is true to you. For more information, visit shift.life.